ones that, amen. You ought to direct your anger toward who? You ought to direct it toward Satan. How to get a witness? Since God has allowed and ordered everything into your life, it wasn't no surprise to him. It may have surprised you, but listen to it. When you start looking at it the way God looks at it, the way God looks at us, can I get a witness? Amen. God is not holding your sin against you. Can I get a witness? Amen. God has forgiven every one of them, past, present, and future. And he said that we ought to do what? Forgive one another as I have forgiven you. Amen. So basically, we cannot operate in the fullness of the Spirit all because we will not learn how to forgive each other. Right. It's not individuals that are hurting you. It's the devil using that individual. Or, hey, listen real good. You need to get this if you get anything else. If you cannot look beyond an individual that has hurt you as being just a tool that was used by Satan yeah. and that they are wrestling with principalities and powers of darkness and heavyweight spirits from the unseen world just like you are. And any day and any given time, one of them can have you and cause you to make a flood of Can I get a witness up in here? You better open your eyes and understand this sermon because you're not going to be able to grow. You will not experience the fullness of the love that God wants you to have towards your brothers and sisters. You will not experience peace. You will not experience joy in its fullness because you so hung up tangled up and tied up with what somebody did to you. Right. Gotta get a witness. It wasn't that person. It was Satan that was using that person in a moment of weakness. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Amen. I don't care if it was Eve done Eve wickedly. Let's go to Joseph. Let's go to Joseph. Genesis the 50th chapter. I'm going to read you a little bit here. If anybody had a reason to not forgive, I believe it was Joseph. Good Lord. He got in trouble with his brothers all because of what? He was a dreamer. He was the favorite. Can I get a witness? He told a little dream about how that his brothers were going to end up serving him. They all got mad and ended up and did what? Put him in a pit and sold him off into Egypt. Sent him away and pretended that he was dead and all that kind of good stuff. You know the story. So I want to read an excerpt here to you. As to see how Joseph ended up faring. After all the wrong that his brothers did to him, he went through particular hell for a season. But with his God-given ability to interpret dreams, he found favor with who? Pharaoh. I'm just going to tell you the story. If you want to read it, go over to the 50th chapter of Genesis. It'll help you with it. Read from the 45th through the 50th. And anyway, Joseph ended up telling uh, the Potiphar's dreams. And so therefore, he ended up becoming the what? The second in command. He was given charge over the food and everything. And God, guess what? Sent Joseph down in Egypt. Can I get a witness? Gave him authority and power. Now he had to come out of the pit to get to the palace, did he not? He had to go through something. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Don't you expect to come here and live a Christian life and expect to go to the promised land without some problems? Can I get a witness? Amen. But look at it like this, that all the adversity that God allows to come your way, you can use it as a stepping stone to go to the what? Next level spiritually. Joseph used that, amen, his ability, God-given gift to interpret dreams, got on, amen, Pharaoh's good side, end up becoming the what, number, second, number two man in Egypt. Now he's over the food supply. Well, God knew way before, God knew ahead of time that a famine was coming to the land. Can I get a witness? A famine came, but Egypt had plenty. So therefore, in order for providence to keep God's people safe and to keep Israel operative, God had already, what, sent Joseph to Egypt in a bad way and in a terrible way. And if he had not seen God, if he was not right with God, if he had not given forgiveness to his brothers, then it would have been trouble for all of Israel. 
by Joseph having a spirit of forgiveness, he forgave his brothers and he, amen, met the needs of his people. Can I get it with him? All because he was set up by God. The same thing is happening to you if you are truly a child of God. Amen. Any hurt, any pain, any doubt, any fear, any, any dastardly deed, amen. Anyone being unfaithful as far as me, amen, male or female, wife or husband, if you can weather the storm and look past the amen, that person, amen. and see God allowing it to happen, and it may look like it's evil. You may look like you can't understand it. Don't look like it was fair. All you've got to do is know that God is in control. Amen. That God allowed it to come. And you start loving that person. You start praying for that person. Can I get away with it? This is God's way. God's way is so far above our little bitty limited way is pathetic. Amen. And that is the reason that there's so much sickness. This is an unforgiveness that affects our health. Right. It affects our mind. Yeah. It affects our spirituality Amen. and everything else because we are walking around tight lifted like everything is cool. No, it's not cool. Amen. I dug up some trash in me from way back down the that I found that I was holding on to. It'll make you mean. How to get a witness? It'll yeah. make you snappy. How to get a witness? Make you hostile. Gotta get a witness. And this comes out of the bitterness that goes along with it. Yeah. Unforgiveness comes out of bitterness. Number one, you're bitter. You allow Satan to get you what? Bitter right. about things. You look out, you see sinners just living a good life, no health problem. You start rationalizing. I've given God my very best, yeah. and what did I get for it? I get cancer, I have a heart attack, I have this hurt, I got that hurt, I can't get along with nobody on my job, my boss won't promote me. Can I get a witness here? I've given my all in all, it seems like I had given my hand out full of love and blessings and being benevolent, but all I get back is a hand full of poop. I'm getting sick and tired of it. Can I get a witness? Don't seem like life is fair. Hey, God, you did not treat me right. Can I, get, I think I'll just go on backslide. At least out there I can get my high on. I can do a little fornicating and committing adultery that give me temporary peace and joy and a good feeling. But all I'm going through, Lord, because I've been with you is nothing but pain and suffering. Amen. You better know this, that that pain and suffering is lifting you up to a high level spiritually if you can endure it. Amen. Like the songwriter said, I've come too far oh, yeah. and I can't turn around. Yeah. Amen. And it may be given for some of you young people to hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. Go about a year, go about six months, and then you feel like you got to turn around. How to get a witness? Go on back out there in the world, and the world beats the hell out of you. And then you come running back to church and you're hanging there about a year. But it's just a cycle. If you just keep coming back, you're going to be just fine. One day your eyes are going to be opened by God Almighty. You will understand the plan He has for you. Can I get with it? And you will be just like us when we're gone. You will be able to tell your young people about who God is and that He's never made a mistake. How He loves us and how He wants us to do what? Be representatives of His kingdom and showing love to one another. Forgiveness is a hard thing. Forgiveness costs you something. Yes, it does. Forgiveness causes you to bear the blunt weight of somebody else in return you. In other words, you will not go back and injure them the way they injured you. You will take that injury upon yourself. That's what love is. Amen. You will not treat that person as if they've done anything to you. This is what unconditional love is. And if you can't do that, then you should know that you have a defect in your ability to love. Amen. It'll show you just how far you are away from the love of Christ. I, I got Amen. some scriptures here. Let me read this right quick. 
The title of this message is simply Unforgiven. And I thought about Clint Eastwood. <laughs> he ended up killing Ned, Morgan Freeman. He ended up cutting up the girl's face real bad. You know, what's his name? Bob or Bill? 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 The sheriff? Bill ended up halfway beating uh, Clint Eastwood half of that. Clint Eastwood know how to handle a gun. He said in a gunfight, he said it ain't the fastest. He said, God, bullets start flying, you gotta remain cool. But what they did to Ned, beat Ned to death and put him on display, that, that got Clint Eastwood completely angry. He had no forgiveness in his heart at all. And he walked up and when he got himself back well and the nurse back to hell, he put on his cowboy hat and loaded up his gun and he walked in the saloon where old Bill was shared. And all his cohorts were kicking it, drinking and going on. And Clint Eastwood full of unforgiveness. No mercy at all. He walked in and when the doors opened, everybody looked around, everybody was involved, they were scattered. They knew something was getting ready to jump off. Bad Bill said some oh, I guess you come to town to do this and I'm gonna Penny Boy said, Nate, uh, Bill, I come to town to kill you. He said, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill all your boys, all because of what you did to Nate. And Eastwood had mastered his ability to use a weapon. He said it ain't the quickest or the fastest. He said you just got to be cool when you get shot at. Pick your targets and aim and shoot. He said don't duck and run and duck. Just stand there. He said they, they won't get you. He said you just start shooting. When Eastwood opened up on them, boy, and let me tell you, he got to just standing there. They were shooting all around and he just one pick them one at a time. Bam and bam. And bam. <laughs> had no mercy. And to show his state of mind, when he got ready to leave that saloon, he crouched down behind the door. And he was getting ready to walk out, and he said these words. He said, if any of you take a shot at me, he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your wife and your kids. Now, that's not forgiveness. You understand what I'm saying? And that sounds so hard, don't it? unforgiveness of that kind. I kill your wife, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm gonna kill your kids. That's unforgiveness. Don't seem as if that's so terrible. Because a lot of us are walking around today spiritually with that same mindset. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to work on this until I can cause you some pain. I want you to know that I didn't like it. And I'm going to fix it myself. That's not the Bible way. That's not God's way. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I, I heard Sister Ingram talking about she had something on her mind. Well, dear the Lord, let me know what was on your mind. You know, we both gifted. Amen. I'm not going to mention it, but you were thinking real hard on something and wasn't paying attention. I've been there in the same place. In Dallas, Texas. I was involved in something that was so deep for me as a child of God, I turned my car right in front of another man's car with his baby in it. And the baby, he had to grab the baby to keep the baby from hitting the windshield and all this, and he was mad. He got out of his car, ran to me, and I had a pistol. I, I knew I was wrong. I didn't want to shoot the guy. But anyway, he was mad. What's wrong with you? And I said, I just looked at him and I just said, Forgive me, I said, I've got a lot on my mind right now. That's just the way sin and the devil can do you. Got to get it with you. God's forgiving spirit, he'll take your mind, set you up to get you hurt and everything else. I want to read this. The 50th chapter of uh, Genesis, beginning at the 15th verse. And this is how Joseph found it. Joseph ended up being a blessing. He had a forgiving spirit. Man, that's beautiful. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph, we are peradventure hate us. See, they expected to be hated and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. He's going to pay us back. 16. And they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, 